Brothers and sisters, do you know the six things that happen when Allah loves you? Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith that is authentic, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي Allah says, my slave continues to come closer and closer to me بِالنَّوَافِلْ through voluntary deeds, deeds حَتَّى أُحِبَّ until I love him. And when I love him, check what happens. When Allah loves you, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ به. I will be the hearing which he hears with. Yes, you heard that right. And I will be the sight which he sees with. And I will be the hand which he holds things with. And I will be the leg which he walks with. And if he ever asks me for something, I will respond, I will give it. And then Allah says in number six, brothers and sisters, and if he needs any protection, I will protect them. Six things Allah will provide. You're like, brother, don't move forward. Explain. Explain what? What does it mean Allah will be the hearing which we hear with? It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, will protect what you hear. And Allah will protect you from hearing things that will ruin your iman. Allahu Akbar. And had it come and had you hear it, Allah will be able to protect you from it. May Allah protect our hearing, our seeing, where we go, what we hold, and our iman, Amir Rabbil Alameen. So Allah will guide your legs to go to places that are pleasing to Allah. And Allah will protect your legs from going to places that are displeasing to Allah and may harm you. May Allah make you and I of those whom Allah loves. So of the 10 groups, brothers and sisters, whom are we going to talk about tonight or this evening? We will talk about, yalla, what does it say here? Inna allaha yuhibbul muqsitin. This is one of the 10 groups Allah says that He loves in the Quran. al muqsitin the ones who are fair, the ones who uphold justice, brothers and sisters. Allah says in the Quran, inna allaha yuhibbul muqsitin. Allah for sure loves those who are fair and just three times in the Quran. Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah he says, Al-Qistu huwa al-adlu fi al-mu'amalat. He said Al-Qist, which this word comes from Al-Muqsitin, is justice in terms of transactions and dealing between people. So let's inshallah brothers and sisters, before I jump to the three locations where Al-Muqsitin was mentioned, let me remind you of something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the reason He sent prophets, ready for this? Allah says, A'udhu billahi mishtan rajeem, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Allah says He sent the prophets with clear proofs. That's it, no, two more things. وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابِ And we revealed books with them. والميزان, and the balance of truth and justice. Why did Allah send prophets? Why did Allah reveal the books? Why did Allah reveal the sharia? Why? لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطَ So that people may maintain their affairs in justice, brothers and sisters, in fairness. May Allah allow you and I to be able to follow the deen. That is why saying Islam is unfair, that is completely against Islam. Islam came to establish what's fair, establish what's just. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you and I to be of those who spread justice, even though we do see corruption is at an increase, but inshallah justice will be coming forth through you and I inshallah, and will go to the peak, bi'ithnillah as Isa ibn Maryam and al-Mahdi, they come forward. What, what do you, what, you just kind of jumped a little bit too far in signs of Yawm al-Qiyamah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ready for this hadith? He says, لَوْ لَمْ يَبْقَى مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا يَوْمِ He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if there was only one day left of this world, one day left until this world comes to an end, لَطَوَّلَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ حَتَّى Allah will make this day longer and longer until, until what happens? Until Allah sends a man from the family of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. His name will be my, like my name, Muhammad. And the name of his father is like the name of my father. Name will be Muhammad Abdullah. Yamla'u al-ardu. He will come and will spread justice and fairness across the globe, brothers and sisters. 
The Prophet says, كَمَا مُلِئَتْ ظُلْمًا وَجُورًا Just like how the earth before him was filled with oppression and tyranny, we will not wait for the Mahdi or that gentleman, may Allah be pleased with all of us, Ya Rab, to wait to be able to establish justice. We will start and do the work, may Allah allow you and I to be fair in our families, within our lives and those around us. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. So let's go brothers and sisters and talk about one of the ayat in which Allah says He loves Al-Muqsitin, those who are just. Are you ready? Yalla, Bismillah. Allah says, سَمَّاعُونَ لِلْكَذِبِ أَكَّالُونَ لِلسُّحْتِ Now I'm mentioning the ayah where Allah says He loves the Muqsitin, but it's coming, you have to hold on inshaAllah. Allah talks about a group of people, some Munafiqeen and some of the Yahud. They do not like Muhammad Sallallahu They don't really like Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They have a personal agenda, okay? But Allah says, these people, أَكَّالُونَ suht, those who consume that as haram, and they also سَمَّاعُونَ لِلْكَذِبِ They follow that which is wrong. Allah says, فَإِن جَاءُوكَ If they come to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu why would they come? To have you judge in a problem they have. So let's say they have a dispute, they have a problem, and they want Muhammad Sallallahu to be able to solve the problem, to judge who's right and who's wrong. Allah says Muhammad Sallallahu has two options. فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ If you want to judge, go for it. أَوْ أَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ Or you can turn their request down. So it's up to you. So Allah says, وَإِن تُعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ If you wish to turn down their request, فَلَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ شَيْئًا These people will not harm you whatsoever. وَإِنْ حَكَمْتَ Here it is. But if you choose to judge, okay, between those who do not even like you, between those who very much hate you, but you chose to judge, وَإِنْ حَكَمْتَ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْقِسْطَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ Then be sure, Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you judge with justice, with fairness, even though they don't like you. Allahu Akbar, it doesn't matter. Don't let that change your balance. The qist, the adil, the fairness. Brothers and sisters, this is our deen. حَتَّى وَلَوْ كَانُوا ظَلَمَ وَأَعْدَاءَ فَلَا يَمْنَعُ كَذَلِكَ مِنَ الْعَدْلِ فِي الْحُكْمِ بَيْنَهُمْ Look at this ayah that Allah says, where Allah says, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ Allah says, do not allow the hatred or enmity you may have towards someone عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا That will cause you, that hatred you have towards someone or they have towards you, to cause you to be unfair. Don't let that happen. Allahu Akbar. May Allah allow us to be fair. I know it's not easy. You're like, bro, wallah, this is tough. And I know they don't like me and I have the opportunity to judge and kind of like ruin the guy who doesn't like me and probably wants to hurt me. But Allah says, no, no. اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى You be just, you be fair, that is closer to piety. Brothers and sisters, that is why the reward of being fair and just is magnificent. اسْمَعْ هَذَا الْجَزَاءِ للمقصطين. Listen, رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم, excellent. He said, إِنَّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَنَابِرَ مِنْ نُورِ Those who are fair, those who are just, أيوة. where will they be? They will be with Allah on pulpits and stages of light. They will have VIP seats with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to appreciate that because you worked hard. It was difficult on yourself to be fair sometimes and and sometimes, you know, it's, it's a struggle and painful, but no, Allah will love you. Allah will love you if you were fair and just with those who may possibly hate Allah. SubhanAllah, may Allah protect us and grant us guidance and wisdom and how to approach things the right time and the right way. So then, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, عَلَى مَنَابِرَ مِن نُورَ عَنْ يَمِينِ الرَّحْمَانِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَكِلْتَ يَدَيْهِ يَمِينَ Then, who are they? الَّذِينَ يَعْدِلُونَ Then they have three attributes. I want you to focus with me and be honest which of the three you have. May Allah make you have all three. These people sitting on these pulpits of flight, such beautiful position, VIP seats. And you know in dunya, in this worldly life, if you go to a convention uh, of people that you very much look up to, okay? You have a speaker's lounge, right? In some convention, there's a speaker's lounge.
And it says sometimes VIP or whatever the case is. And you're like, I wish I can go there and see that brother. And some of us were like, I want to see this teacher, wonderful sister or so. And then our sister's like, you know, I would like to look up to this a wonderful lady. But she's in that speaker's lounge and you wish to have a pass to go in. How would it feel if that door opens and tell you, you know what? Tafaddal, come in, come in, go to that VIP room, to that convention, to the speakers that you really look up to. How excited will you be, right? And you see, mashallah, tabarakallah, usually there's a buffet yani, behind the scenes to share with you, right? A buffet or some snacks and stuff. You go there, you're excited, you can't wait, can I take a picture? You're so proud, subhanAllah. Allah is the best of example. Allah, you'll be next to Him if you were fair. How? Three things. الَّذِينَ يَعْدِلُونَ فِي حُكْمِهِمْ Those who are fair in the way they judge, whether between children, between students, um, in any situation. فِي حُكْمِهِمْ The way you judge and say who's right and who's wrong. وَأَهْلِيهِمْ And you're fair specifically with family, with your spouse, with your children, with your parents. وَأَهْلِيهِمْ وَمَا وَلُوا And the third one, over everything which you have responsibility over. And Rasulullah took this very serious, check this out. And Nu'man bin Bashir radiallahu anhuma, he said, my father a'tani abi atiyah, my dad gave me a gift. Tamam, nice, beautiful. Tayyib, what happened? The wife and the mother of an Nu'man, she saw that. So she went to al-Bashir. She said, Bashir, did you get a similar gift to your other children? He said, Al-Bashir, the father said, no, la. So the mother said, I do not approve of this. Go to Muhammad Rasulullah and present what just happened. Let him judge to see if this is right or wrong. فَأَتَى رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Al-Bashir went with his son al numan to the Prophet. So Al-Bashir says, Ya Rasulullah, Inni a'taytu ibni, I have given my son from my wife Amrata binti Rawaha, a'tiyya, a gift. Okay. Fa'amaratni, my wife commanded me, an ushiduka, ya Rasulullah, to be able to uh, have you a witness on this transaction. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, a'taytu sa'ira waladika mithlu hadha, did you give all your children like a similar gift? So Al-Bashir says, La, no. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam listened to what he said. He said, Fattaqu Allah, Fattaqu Allah, wa'adilu bayna awladikum, brothers and sisters. Fattaqu Allah, wa'adilu bayna awladikum. Then what did Al-Bashir do? Faraja'a, faradda'a atiyyata. He went and he returned back the gift. If you're not able to afford it to all, to an extent in terms of, there doesn't have to be the exact same gift. Um, you're not going to gift your 18-year-old the same gift you'll give a four-year-old. But the concept, let's say someone is traveling, they come back home, all right? You got all these beautiful gifts. Here you go, here you go. Ya Allah, Bismillah, you got all these gifts, okay? So you have that small one for Mathan Ahmed. This is for Khadija. You have the concept that, you know what? I remembered all of you. These are the gifts to be feared. May Allah reward you all, brothers and sisters, and make you of those who are fair. Say, Ameen. This is live. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. Tayyip. Let's go to the other ayah, insha'Allah, that talks about Al-Qist. Ready? Yalla, let's move, insha'Allah, to the other ayah where Allah talks about He loves Al-Muqsateen. What's going on here? Listen, let me read to you the ayah and you will, insha'Allah, understand. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا If there's two groups of believers, they are fighting one another, what should you do? فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا Try to reconcile, try to fix a situation. فَإِن بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى If one of the groups, let's say for example, Ahmed Khalid, if you're watching, if your name is Ahmed Khalid, don't take it personal, this is an example. Let's say Ahmed and let's say Khalid, okay? They're having this problem and you come and you try to resolve it. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا Reconcile, fix the problem. Come on brothers, Ahmed, Khalid, come on guys, let's try to fix this. But فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا If Ahmed says no and he crossed the line and he transgressed, ah, then what should you do? فَقَاتِلُ الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيءَ إِلَىٰ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Then you go against that one who's oppressing, the one who's transgressing. Brothers and sisters, this is our deen, to push back and help our brothers and sisters, even if they were oppressors. 
help my brother and sister even if they're oppressors? Yes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look to what he said. Unsur zaliman aw mazluma. Help out your brothers, support your brother and sister, whether they were oppressed or, sorry, whether they were the oppressors or they were oppressed. So one of the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, ansuruhu idha kana mazluma. I, I, I got the point of helping out my brother if he was oppressed. I got that for sure. But how do we give him victory? Afara'ita idha kana zalima, an oppressor. Kayfa ansuru? How do I help out in this situation? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, tahjuzuhu aw tamna'ahu min al-dhulm. You try to stop him from oppressing. That's how you help out your oppressing brother and sister. You try to stop him from oppressing. This is how you give victory to your brother and sister. So now you're jumping. Ahmed is transgressing. So now you fight against Ahmed. Okay? And you go all out. Maybe Khalid will help you out, right? If that Ahmed group, they surrender. Like, خلاص, خلاص, okay, okay. I'm, you know what? I, I, I realized what I did was wrong. I'm not going to do this no more. Okay, I promise, khalas, tawbah. Okay, fantastic. Allah says, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا The same sentence, right? Beginning, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا If they fight transgress, then Allah says, go back to square one and fix the problem. But this time, Allah adds a couple words. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدِلِ وَأَقْصِطُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْصِطِينَ Allah added these words of be fair and be just. Allah loves those who are fair and just. You know, when you go and you try to push that transgression against the brother who was oppressing, sometimes your emotions, you're like, you know what? We could have made a deal for $10. You don't deserve it. We will fine you, charge you interest because of the chaos you caused, all that stuff, right? No, go back and try to reconcile. Allahu Akbar, it's not easy, brothers and sisters. وأقصطوا, you know what that also means? If in the process of you trying to fight Ahmed and put him down, and for example, you knock out the bottle of water, okay, and it spills, waqsitu means you got to pay for the damage. What? Yes. You, you want to fight Ahmed or stop Ahmed, okay? If by, on, the, on the way, by accident, you knock out a couple lights, all right, you break his car, not supposed to, you need to fix that damage. Oh Allah, it's tough. That is why Allah says, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muqsitin. Allah will love you. Wallahi khalas. If Allah loves you and He becomes that sight which you see with, the hearing which you hear with, the hands which you hold things with, the legs which you walk with, isn't that a ni'mah? And Allah will guide where you walk, what you say, what you see, what you hear, what you touch. And if you ever ask Him, He will respond. And if you ever want protection, He'll protect you. Wallahi, it's worth it. It's tough. Brothers and sisters, and you know who did a very, very, very great job with that? Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before I jump to the story, Allah says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu. In another verse, Kunu qawwameena bil qist shuhada'a lillah. Allah says, be sure to establish justice and as, justice as witnesses for the sake of Allah. Walaw, pay attention to this, and here's I'm changing the picture, walaw ala anfusikum. Even if you being fair will fire back against you, you're like, I'm going to tell the police officer in this accident that I, one, the one who was wrong, yes, if you were wrong, say you were wrong. If you cut a red light, say you cut a red light. It's tough. It's tough. وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ Allah says, even if it goes against you, أَوِ الْوَالِدَيْنِ Even if it will go against your parents, Justice is justice. There's no sugar coating. There's no hook it up. La wal aqrabin and your close relatives, sons, daughters, brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews. Doesn't matter. Justice does not know gender. Justice does not know religion in terms of oh he's Muslim, okay, he's Christian. No. La justice does not know age. Justice does not know anything besides the truth. May Allah make us of those who establish justice. And now let's go to the story of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ready? Okay, what happened? Rasulullah sallallahu he was after Ghazwat al-Fatih, the conquest of uh, Mecca. Okay, what happened? There was a, a lady from a respected family that stole, committed theft, saraqat, 
So the people panicked. You know what? We don't want the penalty to be established and applied on this lady because the penalty of stealing in that situation was the cutting of the hand. This is the law that Allah has provided for us. Okay, in the obviously Muslim country, Sharia Allah, you don't go around, do it in Dearborn. Okay, relax, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, this is our uh, deen, inshallah, we're, when we're proud of that, no problem. So then the people said, who can we talk to, to talk to Muhammad Sallallahu We want a middle person between us and the Prophet, someone who the Prophet loves so much that we can tell him, go tell Muhammad Sallallahu you know, uh, not to apply the rule on, and cut her hand, please, like, come on guys. Okay, please. So they went to who? They went to Usama ibn Zayd radiyallahu anhuma. Wonderful Sahabi, Usama. And Rasulullah really, really loved him, brothers and sisters. The yastashfi'una, please help us out. And Usama accepted radiyallahu an. So Usama ibn Zayd, he goes to the Prophet sallallahu and he tells him whatever is necessary to intercede for the lady who stole and you know, for the rule of Allah or the law not to apply on her. So he spoke to Rasulullah Sallam. What happened? Rasulullah Sallam's face, the color of his face changed. Talawana, talawana Rasulullah Sallam. Why? He was so angry that his face was full of redness, changed in color. And he told Osama, the one who he loved so much, you are trying to convince me not to apply one of the rules of Allah in another narration what's the matter with you you're trying to hook up someone and help them out at the expense of not fulfilling the command of Allah subhanallah then Usama got nervous he says Istaghfirli. Istaghfirli Ya Rasulullah, like I'm so sorry, I apologize, ask Allah to forgive me, please Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah Sallallahu after some time, not too long after, he gave a speech to the public, to the world to hear, for you and I to hear it today in 2021, in Ramadan 2021 brothers and sisters. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi he gave a speech in it, look what, to what he said, ready? Listen very carefully, he said, Ida, uh, he says, let I me mean, just remember exactly. Okay, he says, Amma ba'd, after he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, now next, or moving on to the main point. فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ النَّاسُ قَبْلَكُمْ أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا What ruined the people in the past, what destroyed all these previous generations, many previous generations were destroyed. Do you know why? Why, Ya Rasulullah? إِذَا سَرَقَ فِيهُمُ الشَّرِيفَ تَرَكُوهُ when the noble and the elite in society stole and committed theft, they let go of him and did not hold him accountable. وَإِذَا سَرَقَ فِيهِمُ الضَّعِيفِ أَقَامُ عَلَيْهِ الحد. When the weak and the poor, they stole, oh, they establish justice on them and apply the penalty. So there's no difference whether rich or poor, it doesn't change the justice system. And look at the conclusion of Muhammad Sallallahu in this hadith. He says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ I swear by Allah, Wallahi. He swears, I, by, I swear by the one whom my soul is in his hands. What Ya Rasulullah? لَوْ أَنَّ فَاطِمَةَ بِنْتُ مُحَمَّدٍ سَرَقَتْ If my own daughter, Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stole, لَقَطَعْتُ يَدَهَا I will cut her hand. I'll apply the rule of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is why we have some of the, not some, the greatest generation ever during the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the rule was applied on that lady. And this lady, she made tawbah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala afterwards. She got married and Alhamdulillah, it seems that she went back on track. May Allah forgive us and protect us and allow us to establish justice with wisdom, the right time, right place, of course, with the leadership being involved in such situations, but nothing to be embarrassed about. Part of the qist, part of the justice of me 
Speaking is to tell you Islam as it is and not to cut things and you know in terms of fake things up for people just to see oh it's so beautiful that we have everything is beautiful but sometimes it's tough and sometimes it might be gentle sometimes it might be firm but this is the deen of Allah may Allah protect us and grant us all wisdom Ameen Rabbil Alameen the last ayah brothers and sisters that has Inna Allah Yuhibbul Muqsateen ready okay anybody knows what surah the last one Inna Allah Yuhibbul Muqsateen um, I think many people should know this. Why? Because we're reaching Juz Qad Sami'a, I believe. So, naam. Ch chapter number 60. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين. What's the story? Allah says it's not haram. Okay, because some people may have not uh, known very well at that time. There might be some confusion or they want further clarification. Why? Allah says it's not haram for you to be respectful, to be fair, and Allah loves for you to be just and fair towards those who may not be Muslim, okay? They may not even appreciate Allah and the Prophet of Allah, but they do not fight you, okay? They're not fighting you. And they're not trying to kick you out of your land and get out of this place and putting a gun on your head. They're not doing that. Allah says for you to be kind to the, towards them, to have qist, you know, justice towards them. They gift you, you give a gift back to them. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, Allah says, rather I love it, I will love those who may establish justice. Some scholars, they say, this ayah was revealed because of Asma binti Abi Bakr radiallahu anhuma. What happened? Now, this, this story is authentic, but some say it's related to this verse and Allah knows best. Let me explain. Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased by both of them, she had her mom come over. Her mom was not Muslim during that hadith and that story. Okay, what happened? She wanted, the mother of Asma, she wanted to get closer to her daughter Asma. Asma is Muslim, her mom is not. So her mom's trying to, you know, get her to love her, get closer to her, approaching her, gift her something. So Asma radiallahu anha, for how much she loves Allah and the Prophet وسلم, she wants to make sure that's okay. That even if it's my mom or my dad, my son, my daughter, whoever in the world it is, I just want to make sure this thing is pleasing to Allah, which is accepting that closeness of them, exchanging gifts with them, being kind to them, being fair. I just want to make sure this being a safe sign. فَاسْتَفْتَتْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. So she went to the Prophet وسلم and she asked him, she said, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, إِنَّ أُمِّي مَيْ مَامْ قَدِمَتْ عَلَيَّ وَهِيَ رَاغِبَةً My mom came to me and she wants to get closer to me. You know, gift me some stuff, hang out with me. أَفَأَصِلُهَا Shall I keep good ties with her, strong ties, you know, connect and so on? So the Prophet ﷺ says, Naam, Naam, Saliha. Yes, for sure, have strong kin uh, ties of kinship with your mom. No doubt in that, though she is a polytheist, she doesn't believe in Allah, this will not change things, brothers and sisters. Allahu Akbar, this is our deen. May Allah make us of those who are fair and just. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. As Allah says in the Quran, what did Allah say about parents? And parents' topic will come again in one of the other 10 groups Allah loves, and you will see, unintentionally, just, it just comes up, all right? Allah says in the Quran, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ If your parents are pushing you, pressuring you, Yalla, do what? Pressure to do what? عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي To commit not a haram like a minor sin here and there, drink this and smoke that, which is may Allah protect us. No, to do the greatest sin عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ That which you have no knowledge over, as in this is completely wrong. فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Allah says, do not obey your parents. If they tell you to commit shirk and worship other than Allah and associate partners with Him, do not obey them. But, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا But you can still befriend them. Ya Allah, be friends with them. If this is towards parents that tell us to do haram, Allah says, be good to them, befriend them. But what about parents that say, Isha al Fajr, wake up for Fajr? What about parents that tell us, did you pray Dhuhr? What about parents that remind our sisters, 
make sure you wear the hijab, you know, that clothing may not be uh, appropriate. What about parents that go and try to help out our children to memorize the Quran? Ya Allah, how should we treat them? Iqist wa ihsan, may Allah protect you all. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. We are coming to the end, brothers and sisters, and I want to share something with you. If we were not fair, if we were not, if we were not fair, brothers and sisters, then we will be of the zalimeen, the oppressors. Now we talk about qist, but you know what Allah says in the Quran? Allah does not love a zalimeen. The zalimeen, there's no balance. You see the fish here, for example? Where's the water? It's struggling. It's, it's, this is like torture. And this one has the water and so on. This is a dhulm. This is no qist. There's no balance, brothers and sisters. May Allah protect us, Amir Rabbil Alameen. And check this out. Check this out. The one time I said this hadith, before I finish, people were like, what? Let me finish the hadith. Let me finish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, there are things that are haram, haram, prohibited for God to do. What? Yes, some things are haram for Allah to do, Azza wa Jal. Allah says in the hadith, Ya ibadi, inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi. I made oppression prohibited on me. I'm not allowed to oppress. Allahu Akbar. And I made it prohibited. It's a major sin amongst you. Do not oppress one another. And Allah says across the Quran, Wallahu la Allah does not love those who are oppressors. May Allah protect us. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asking the Sahaba, Do you know who's the bankrupt? They said, Ya Rasul, the bankrupt is the one who doesn't have the cash, doesn't have the money, the coins, the bitcoins, or whatever you want to call it, right? No assets, no wealth. So the Prophet Sallallahu he wants to clarify something for the Sahaba. He says, the bankrupt is the one who comes Yawm Al-Qiyamah, brothers and sisters, Bisala, Sadaqah, Siyam. They come Yawm Al-Qiyamah with prayers, Allahumma Barik, charity, zakah, good stuff, fasting, Siyam, Tayyib, this is like awesome. Hold on. However, when they come Yawm Al-Qiyamah, they go and they have in their records that they have Shatama Hadha, they curse that person. And they stole the wealth of that other person. And they killed the other person. No justice, no fairness in their dealings, backbiting and gossiping and ruining people around. So what happens? The one with hasanat, so much, salah, zakah, siyam, he starts passing down good deeds. Okay, here you go, because I oppressed you the other day. Here you go, because I oppressed you the other day, the coins decrease, decrease, I was in hasanat, no more hasanat, until what happens, brothers and sisters, when there's no more good deeds, and this man is pretty much done, he ends up receiving, receiving the bad deeds of other people, then that person is thrown into hellfire. This is how bad it is to be of the oppressors. May Allah protect you all. May Allah make you of those who are just. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Okay, brother. Yalla Bismillah. What's the conclusion? What's the conclusion? Here's the conclusion. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man kanat inda akhihi mazlama, whoever oppressed anyone, if you ever had a story now that I'm saying this, you remembered, oh, I wasn't fair in that dealing. I wasn't just towards one of the children, whether it was five years ago, 10 years ago, the way you deal, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Man kanat inda akhihi madlama, falyatahallalhu minhu liyawm. Yalla, bismillah, today you fix it. Today you fix it. Fa innahu laysa thamma dinarun wala dirham. On the day of judgment, there's no money. There's no money to resolve the problems. Like, okay, I'll give you a check or a hundred thousand dollars. La ya habibi, it's no benefit. Then what is it? Min qabli an yu'khadha li akhihi min hasanati. It will be the good deeds and the bad deeds, brothers and sisters. So may Allah allow you and I to be able to establish justice. And may Allah allow you and I to be able to fix things if we ruined it in the past with others. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. This was al muqsitin Inna Allah yuhibbul muqsitin Allah loves those who are fair and just. I hope this session was beneficial. May Allah bless you. May Allah protect you.